Pipeline binding by property name can be kind of tricky. So I'm going to start with an example of when it doesn't work the way you think it would. So we're going to talk about why get service pipe to stop process kind of works, but kind of doesn't work. First of all, let's look at the type of object output by get service. Get member tells us that it's a system dot service process dot service controller. So we'll just call it a service controller for short. So if we were to pipe this to stop process, let's see what stop process would do with it. Help stop process dash full. We need to see if any of stop processes parameters are capable of accepting a service controller. And none of them are. Input object can accept another process object, but that parameter does not accept a service controller. So that means pipeline parameter binding by value is not going to be active. And that's when PowerShell shifts to plan B, which is pipeline binding by property name. So let's go and see which parameters support that. Here's one, ID, and that takes an integer. Uh, and name is also accepting pipeline input by property name. And it looks like that's it. So we've got two parameters capable of accepting pipeline input by property name. ID and name. Now we need to take a look at what's being produced by get service again and see if it has a name or ID property. I don't see ID. We have to remember to scroll up a bit because sometimes you can have alias properties and it does have a name alias property. So here's what's going to happen. The contents of the name property of the objects produced by get service are going to be attached to the name parameter of the next commandlet. In other words, get service, pipe to stop process, it's going to take the service names and attach them to the name parameter of stop process, which tells stop process which processes to try and stop. The problem I'm going to predict is that most service names are not the same as their process. In other words, the service Windows Remote Management actually has a process name of winrm.exe. So the service name and the process name won't match. Let's throw in a little dash what if action and see what happens. Well, it looks like the majority of them aren't working. So I've sent in a service name called nap agent and there was no process called nap agent, so it failed. But occasionally, we'll hit a success. There's a service called msdtc and its service name is the same as its process name. So pro stop process is telling us it would have stopped it. So that's kind of an example of two commandlets that can technically plug into one another, but not very successfully. Let's take a look at one that looks really good. In fact, let's see if I actually have this module already loaded. I do, Active Directory. Let's look at help on new AD user. Oops, I meant dash full. So if we look at some of the parameters on this, and I'm just going to scroll down till we get to the middle. Dash department accepts pipeline input by property name. So does description and display name and division. In fact, most of these parameters accept pipeline input by property name. What's that mean? Well, let's create a little CSV file in Notepad. As you can see, the first line in the CSV file, per normal, is a set of column names. SAM account name, name, department, title, and city. Now let's fill in some data. Uh, let's call this first one Don J. We'll give him the same name. Department will be IT. Title will be CTO. And the city is Las Vegas. Let's make another one for Greg S. And see, we'll put him in custodial. And we'll make him a janitor in the Denver office. And we'll do another one called Chris G. And we'll make him, uh, let's see, we'll put him in the finance department and we'll make him the bookkeeper and we'll put him in Las Vegas as well. Save that file. Now there's a neat little trick about the import CSV commandlet. What it does is it reads each data row and turns it into an object and each of those objects receive properties that correspond to the columns in the first row. So since my first row had SAM account name name department title and city each of my objects gets those as properties. Because I had three data rows in my CSV file, 
three objects have been placed into the pipeline. Now because these property names correspond to the parameter names of new AD user, that's all I have to do to create new users in my domain. Let's actually hop into Active Directory Users and Computers and take a look at those. Uh, there's Don J, Greg S, and Chris G. And if we pop open, we'll see that on the organization, the job title and department has been filled in, and on address, the city has been filled in. Simply because we provided property names that matched the parameter names, and those parameters were set up to receive input from the pipeline by property name. Now I didn't provide a password, I could have, and because I didn't, you'll notice that the icon indicates that these were created as disabled accounts. I also could have filled in a lot of other information, and I could have used a parameter of new AD user to specify a different location to create those in apart from the default users container, but the idea is pretty straightforward. And if you get used to reading the help and understanding which parameters are able to accept input this way, you can really start to plug all these different commands together into a pipeline instead of having to write a more complicated script to accomplish the same task.